Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make beats like knowledge. So, as usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there. And yeah, let's get started. So, we're at 88 BPM. This is the loop you heard in the intro. The first sound we have here is this bass, which sounds like this. So the way that I made this, I'll talk about the notes first. Basically, it's playing this pattern in B minor. That's the key of the sample. And basically, I just came up with this by listening to the sample and sort of like playing off of that. So if you listen to this with the sample, you can hear. It's kind of working with that. Like you can hear, for example, this part. When it goes to that note, it's sort of like following the sample. And that's really the key here. Like, when you write these bass lines, you want to have something cool that, like, really plays off in the drums and is very, like, you know, bouncy and has a lot of groove. But it needs to work with the sample because if it's fighting the sample, it's just going to sound like a big mess. So, yeah, that's kind of the goal there and how I wrote these notes. Now, as far as the sound goes, it's made with Operator. What I was going for here was I was trying to get, like, a live bass kind of sound, but with FM synthesis. So I'm pretty sure... So like I'm pretty close, I think. Um, I've got a few sine waves here, basically. They're just doing some FM, you can see. They're all at the same octave. They're just kind of like, yeah, I played around with the levels here. Um, you can actually get like a live bass sound pretty easily, honestly, with FM synthesis. Again, if you just play around with sine waves, you can hear like... It has that same kind of tone and that same kind of like mid-range raspiness to it as well. So then after that, I've just got a bit of saturation. I've got the drive up a little bit, and I turned on the sinoid fold. As opposed to the analog clip, it's the default color mode. Sinoid fold is just a little bit more powerful. You can hear it's not quite as powerful as when I switch back to analog clip. Or it's not quite as powerful when I do switch it back to analog clip. But when you have it on sinoid fold, yeah, it just kind of brings out the grit that much more. So then after that, I have a compressor, side chaining it to the kick, and that's it for the bass. The next thing we have here is the sample, which sounds like this. So the way that I did this was basically I took this short, like, one bar loop. That one. And what I did was I brought it in here, I warped it so it would fit this tempo, and then I brought it down minus five. So this is kind of something I hear a lot in Knowledge's beats. Like, he uses a lot of pitch down samples, and it definitely is, like, a pretty cool sound. You know, it kind of has, like, that vapor wavy kind of, like, <laughs> deeper vibe, especially with the vocals in there. And it's, it's a little bit better than this. Like, that's a little too high pitched. Like I said, when you pitch it down, it just gives it that cool, kind of, like, weird, wonky sort of texture that I really like for this kind of stuff. So then, for the processing on that, the way I did this was using a few things. So the first thing I have here is this auto filter. And what I've done with this is I've used it for a low-pass filter. I'm cutting off just really, like, the high highs of the sample. And you can see there's a resonance boost there. So this is a technique I've talked about a lot on here in the past. Um, basically... If you cut off, like, the very high highs of a sound like that, like, you can hear this sample. If I turn this off. That has quite a few of them. Um, if you cut those off, it's just a really, really good way to give it, like, a lo-fi sound. And then the key is just the resonance as well. Like, when you give it that little resonance boost plus cutting off the high highs, that's what gets it. And then after that, I have the saturator. So the saturator is also pretty important for this kind of, like, lo-fi sound. If I turn this off... You can hear the filter is still doing something, but this, combined with that little resonance, really gives it that last little bit of, like, crunchy, lo-fi kind of texture. So I've just turned up the drive a little bit here, and then I played around with the analog clip. If you turn up this bass frequency, that can help to get it kind of crunchy as well. Like, if I turn that off, you can hear it's not quite there. But then when I turn that up, that's how you really get that, like, that grit on top of the sound. So then after that, I've got OTT. If you don't know what OTT is, it is a famous preset for Ableton's multiband dynamics. You can find it in here in the sidebar. Every version of Ableton should have it. But yeah, basically what I'm doing with this, if you don't know, OTT stands for over the top. It's like a really, really extreme multiband compression that just grabs all those little frequencies that aren't quite as loud as like the main ones that are really defining the sound that you're hearing and just pulls them up. It's like, it, yeah, basically just what you would imagine for multiband compression, but just very over the top. 
Um, and so what I've done here is I've kind of blended this in with the dry signal. You can see I turned the amount down to 49%, so it's just under half wet and half dry. Um, if I turn it all the way up, you can hear. Here's without it. And then with it. So you can hear it's really good for getting that kind of like extra little bit of lo-fi sound on top of your samples, but it's a little bit too much. Like, I feel like having too much of that is cutting out a little bit too much of the mid-range, and so it's kind of like taking it out of the beat. Like, it kind of just sounds like you had this beat and you dropped the sample in. So, to fix this, I just used a little bit of it, and so that's why I had it at 49%. So we still get, like, some of that mid-range kind of warmth, or, like, that low mid-range warmth, really. Um, but we also still get that super lo-fi OTT kind of, like, sample sound. Then after that, I've got a compressor, side-chaining it to the kick. The side chaining is pretty important for this style. Obviously, like a lot of people who make these kind of beats use this, like Flying Lotus, um, K Tronado, like a ton of those kind of artists. But yeah, it's just a really, really good way to kind of give it that futuristic sound. Like I feel like this is something Knowledge does that I really like because he's not super outlandish, like it's still kind of like hip hop beats, but doing stuff like this, like side chaining everything to the kick, really gives it again like that kind of more futuristic, more like unique edge. So definitely important there. And then after that, I'm just going to EQ8, cutting out the low end, because this sample had a, quite a bit of it. And especially when you start to bring on OTT, that can kind of bring up some of those rumbly low frequencies. So I just cut them all out with this EQ8. So the next thing I have here are the drums, which all together sound like this. Um, and I've got a bit of processing on the groove, which I'll talk about in a second, but the first drum sound that I have here is this little shaker thing, which sounds like this. So what this is, is this, is this little sample. I honestly don't know if it's a shaker. Honestly, it's just like a click. Like, it's just kind of like a cool little percussion sound. And what I've done is I brought it in here, and it's playing 16th notes, and then I've got a track delayed a little bit. So this gives me an opportunity to talk about something that I think is very important for the style, which is track delay and taking things off of the grid. So if you don't know what Ableton's track delay is, it's this little thing, this D icon down here, you click that, and then all of these come up. And basically what it allows you to do is delay the contents of your track over to the right or to the left, however many milliseconds you want. So it's literally the same thing as if I just zoomed in and did like this, like move that over however many milliseconds or moved it that way however many milliseconds. Um, but it's just a little bit easier to work with because it's in the sidebar here and you can still have everything like really clean and fitting into all your loops and stuff, but still also get the cool kind of like delayed sound. So it's very important here because what it does is it kind of gives your percussion and your other sounds, as I'll explain in a second, a lot of groove. It makes them sort of like flow over the beat a little bit better. So here's where the drums sound like all together with all the track delay. Quite a bit of groove there. If I turn off all the track delay, you can hear they're a lot flatter, a lot more sterile, and just kind of boring to be honest with you. So I'm not sure if this is exactly how Knowledge does it, but this is definitely a great way to get this effect. Like, yeah, I guess you can also get this if you're just playing it in with like an Ableton push or a keyboard or something like that, you know? You just play the things a little bit off the grid. But yeah, moving your percussion back a little bit and other things as well. Like I use this, I move the bass back a little bit as well. And if I play that with the drums, with that track delay, and then if I turn it off, you can see, like, it kind of helps bring it to life. So, yeah, just moving things over like that is a really, really good way to kind of introduce a more human, organic groove to your beats. So then, the next sound we have here in the drums is this little hi-hat. It sounds like this. This is just playing eighth notes. It's just kind of like a nice hi-hat sample, I guess. Um, I've got to track delay a little bit, eight milliseconds. Another thing is, I like to kind of, like, vary the track delay amounts like on the first on the shaker for example i've got it at 20 milliseconds i got this one at eight i got this drum rack at 23 and then the bass is at 10 like they're all different and this is a really good way like if you're not just playing everything in live to really get like again a more organic kind of feel because they're all on a different grid like they're not all just going to perfectly line up as if you had them all on say like 20 milliseconds so that's the hi-hat the next sound we have here are these two little percussion things which sound like this So on their own, these don't really sound like much, but if I play them in the beat, 
you can hear they're just kind of playing off of everything else. They give the drums a little bit of like extra flavor, I guess. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like ear candy. Like it's like the extra little things that you add like this that are subtle and small details that really add up and help make everything sound a lot better. So the way I did these is basically I just took these two little sounds, this one and this one. And I put them in a drum rack here. I don't like using drum racks for like my whole drum kit, so to speak. Um, those of you who watch my tutorials know this, but it's just because like it's a little bit hard to mix. I like having everything on its own track, but when you have two sounds that are like in the same kind of world that you want to be like a similar volume and you want to process them the same, putting those in a drum rack is a really useful tool. So that was how I did those. I've also got them tracked to later a little bit. Next sound we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. So what we got here is just playing this kind of simple pattern. The only thing I will say is you can see I moved this one note off of the grid. Um, there are a lot of other things that are off of the grid in this beat. So there wasn't a lot of need to like take the kick off of the grid. And I kind of like keeping it a little bit tighter and a little bit more on the grid when you have a lot of other things that are moving around in different places because it just kind of helps to ground it a little bit. But I did take that one note off. And I think it helps. Like, it makes it a little bit more interesting because you're hearing everything really tight and on the beat. And then there's just that one hit. That's off the grid. So the way I made this kick was basically by taking this sample, that one's just like a pretty standard, like punchy, deep hip hop kick. And what I did was I brought it into the simpler here and I shortened it a little bit with the amplitude envelope because that one was pretty loud or pretty long. And then I added a pitch envelope to it. So what a pitch envelope is doing, if you don't know, it's the same as like an amplitude envelope or like a filter envelope. Basically you start at one point and you end at another point at the bottom of the sweep. And that's what you're doing with the pitch envelope here. But what I did was, I have it very fast, so it just kind of adds a little bit more punch at the start of the sound. You can hear, yeah, it really brings out, like, the attack of that kick. So that's the kick. The next sound we have here is the snare, which sounds like this. And yeah, not a whole lot to this. Kind of just like a nice, punchy, sort of like vinyl snare. Kind of similar to what I've heard in a lot of Knowledge's beats. Uh, the only thing with this is I did move it off the grid a little bit. So you can see I moved this one back just a tiny bit. I did this one in the clip just because I don't like doing negative values on track delay. It can just get kind of weird sometimes. So I moved this one back a little bit. And yeah, it just kind of takes it off the grid, gives it a little bit more of like a human feel. And then it, you'll see if I put it back on the grid. It just feels a little bit more rigid and just not quite as organic. So then on the whole drum group, I've got a bit of processing as well. So here's what the drums sound like with no processing. So you can hear the essence of it is there, but it's really not got like the proper texture so, and color added to it. So the first thing I have on here is the saturator. And when I'm done with the saturator, it sounds like this. Is so I've just added a tiny bit of drive and then I've got the wave shaper here. I've got the depth up to 42% and we've got the bass frequency turned up a little bit. And I'm just kind of using this to give it a bit more grit. It's kind of like I was doing with the sample there, where like if you turn that bass frequency up, you can get that kind of crunchy, sort of like gritty texture on top of things. Then after that, I've got a very small amount of glue compression. You can see it's not kicking in too much. Um, but what it's doing is it's just kind of helping to compress the drums a little bit. For this style, I really try to stay away from compression on the drums, especially because you want them to be so dynamic. But with this style, knowledge does this in time. Like, his beats are kind of compressed sometimes. And that's part of the sound. Like, that's what gives it that cool kind of, like, vibe where everything is, like, really bouncy and really, like, just jumping out of the mix. It's because it's being compressed like this. So I put this on the drums. And yeah, it just kind of helps to glue them all together. So then the last little like bonus thing I have here is on the master. I made this little audio effect rack. If you want to play around with it, if you get this project file and samples, which you can get in the in the description. But anyway, basically what this is, is it's just kind of like this rack with a filter. And what you can use it for is to do like kind of cool transitions. Like if you do something like this. You know, you can kind of do like cool little things there. So all it is is just a bandpass filter and a little bit of bit reduction. But again, it's kind of a cool way to do like an intro for your beats or something like that. Or maybe you could have a part like if somebody was rapping over this, you could have like a part where there's like four bars where it's all filtered and then it cuts out at the end or something like that. It's just kind of like a cool thing. I thought it would sound cool, so I threw it on the master. And yeah, so that is going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments and make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. 
Thank you again, everybody. And once again, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description if you're a patron on my Patreon. Check there. Like I said, thank you again, everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video.